Welcome to yet another Mark Allen Bicycle Bellingham video. This is going to be a little bit different than my other bicycle videos. We're going to talk about some very serious topics during this video. By the way, welcome to beautiful Cornwall Park, just entering it from Meridian. We're going to talk about how Bellingham is doing in regard to the so-called social distancing, or I prefer to call physical distancing. The video footage that you're watching alternates between a lovely Thursday afternoon and a lovely Saturday afternoon, which allows you to see a weekday and a weekend day here in Cornwall Park. And as you can see, there are very, very few people, and the few people you see are keeping distances well beyond the minimum six feet that all the authorities strongly suggest. The only exception, of course, are families who live together. I was in fear when I listened to the very disturbing news that Seattle had closed down several large city parks because of social distance problems. I wanted to see for myself and be witness with you through this video of what's happening here in Bellingham. And I'm very, very happy to show you what I am seeing right now. Another topic I want to talk about in this video is my own personal end of life care planning. Since I will be turning 67 in May, I am considered to be very vulnerable to the effects of the coronavirus that's going around right now. I could very well be impacted such that I would be unconscious due to diff breathing difficulty. If I'm unconscious, I will be unable to articulate what I wish for care in that kind of event. Our community has strongly suggested to us vulnerable people to perform advanced end of life preparations and articulation to provide instructions to the healthcare community of just what is to be done if I am unconscious and unable to articulate what I want. I will be talking about this interspaced with comments about social distancing throughout this video. I want to talk about the decisions I have made and why I have made them, and why I feel they are important. My goal is to try to encourage you all to start to think and discuss this kind of topic, which can be difficult, with your closest friends and family, and articulate the decision using various forms to your health care providers that they know in advance. Now we are about to leave Cornwall Park and head out into the Thursday afternoon rush hour traffic of Oh little town of Bellingham In thy great streets we ride our bicycles and we love our park, and we love our green ways. 
and may we be gracious and loving stewards of this land so that we and all future people can live on it in full harmony. We are now leaving Cornwall Park on the east side of the park. The driveway leads up a slight hill to Cornwall Avenue in the Cornwall neighborhood. Normally this part of Cornwall is fairly quiet, so it is especially quiet um, today. Now as we come to this intersection up here, normally this is very, very busy. Now since I cannot trip the sensors, nor do I want to touch the pedestrian push buttons, I will make sure all traffic is clear and go ahead and proceed through the signal. Which brings to a point, the metal push buttons for our traffic signals, you might not want to touch those with your bare hand. If you are wearing a long sleeve shirt or jacket, tap the button with your elbow. In a previous video, I taught you how to make a copper wand to press the buttons. If you don't have that, you can grab a nearby stick or broken branch or a stone and whack the button with that. And now let's continue with the more personal side of this story. As I mentioned, I am 66 years old, going on to 67. And through discussions with my neighbors and friends, I have concluded that it's prudent for me to make plans for my end-of-life care desires. If I do get infected by the virus, most likely the impact to me at an advanced age will be more severe than to someone who is younger, and I need to think about that. So after deliberation, meditation, and prayer, I have decided that I do not want to be put on life-sustaining medical care. Let's say, for example, that I have been assigned by Bellingham Television to televise a championship football game on that field on your left. And by the way, folks, on that field, thank you very much for the excellent physical distancing. While televising that football game and not knowing that I was infected by the coronavirus, I gently fall over unconscious because I am unable to breathe. Now, considering the heat of the excitement of the championship game, the officials probably would not notice I have gently fallen down unconscious. If I'm not breathing for a while and due to my advanced age, I will have suffered damage to my brain due to lack of oxygen. Most likely they will take me off that field in an ambulance and put me on a ventilator. I have made a decision that I do not want that to happen. I would want them to put me on comfort care and allow me to peacefully pass away to the other side. There are forms that allow me to articulate my decision. One is called the Physician Orders for Life Sustaining Treatment, called P-O-L-S-T for short, and the other one is called the Durable Power of Attorney for Health Care. Right now you see me 
heading toward the doctor's office to pick up these forms. However, I cannot show you that visit because HIPAA prohibits me from videoing a medical facility. If I did so, I would be punished by that HIPAA rule. Here you see copies of the form slightly modified to display examples of my active, colorful lifestyle to create entertainment as the society maven for our fine little town. If I had that severe brain damage, most likely I would not be able to continue in my lifestyle and my role as the entertainer for our city. Here is a written articulation of my desires that if anything would have happened to me, a heart attack, stop breathing, a stroke, or any other severe event that causes damage to a major part of my body. What this means is that I do not want life-sustaining treatment whatsoever. For example, I do not want to have assisted breathing. I do not want to have intravenous feeding of nutrition. I do not want to have intravenous hydration with the exception of comfort. I do not want to have any medication except for that for comfort. In essence, if I am found to be in a condition where I am unable to communicate my desires, I want to have my desires already known by the healthcare community so they can know that I, all I want is comfort care so that I can peacefully and gracefully pass away and allow the great angels from on high to come down and gently shepherd me through the veil to the other side. And on the other side, I promise to continue to be a star, a rainbow, a galaxy, a beautiful piece of art from which I can still continue to inspire you all to continue the quality of your lives as my friends and my loved ones in this community. Here we are at the southwestern end of Railroad Avenue between the apartment blocks. And as soon as I finish allowing the pedestrian to cross, which we are required to as bicyclists, by the way, we will be forced to turn to southeast and going up the small hill here to the northern terminus of the South Bay Trail, which you will see on your right, adjacent to that construction project. And by the way, I'd like to point out that the footage throughout our journey to and through Boulevard Park will alternate between a Thursday afternoon and a Saturday afternoon, which will give you the opportunity to compare how much traffic there is on this trail and in Boulevard Park on a weekday and a Saturday. By the way, this construction tunnel, I was very impressed 
and how people were very courteous to wait at the end of the tunnel if somebody is going through the tunnel in the opposite direction. Very good exercise in physical distancing. Which leads me to point out that the South Bay Trail and the Boardwalk in Boulevard Park are among the two most constrained facilities as far as being able to get out of the way of large groups of people. With most of the trails and most of the other parks in Bellingham's park system, it is easy to get off the trail either onto adjacent streets or adjacent grassy areas to get out of the way. Here, as you can see, this trail is very constrained with a fence on one side and a, and a steep grade on the other side. However, as you notice, both on the Thursday afternoon and the Saturday afternoon, traffic on this trail is very light and I found it very easy to maintain or exceed the minimum six foot physical distancing that's recommended by the health authorities. Both days, by the way, were very lovely, beautiful, sunny days with comfortable temperatures. Once again, this completely debunks the fear that I had when I heard the news reports and the speech by the mayor of Seattle, which is about 90 miles south of here. The crowds are experiencing in Seattle are not what we're seeing here. Now, welcome to Boulevard Park. I'm going to kind of go through this railroad crossing twice. Again, once on a Thursday afternoon and once on a Saturday afternoon to show you what kind of traffic there is. Boulevard Park is one of the two most busy parks in our park system here in Bellingham, the other one being Bloedel Donovan Park. Knowing that the city has put up posters like this one that remind us to please maintain the minimum six feet physical distancing. The footage you're seeing now is alternating between a Thursday and a Saturday, which demonstrates that on both of those days, there were relatively few people here in Boulevard Park, and they were all staying well above six feet from each other. The only exception are being families. This is a very pleasant thing to observe having heard the disturbing news from Seattle, 90 miles south of here. There are some people here playing Frisbee, but as you can see, they're well beyond six feet apart. The one component of Boulevard Park, however, is the boardwalk, which is perhaps the most constrained facility that the Bellingham Parks and Recreation system has. As you, can, as you can see, it is over water and there's a railing on either side. Now, once again, there is a poster to remind us to stay six feet apart. This can be quite challenging here on the boardwalk. And may I suggest that on very, very busy days, you might want to stay off of the boardwalk. Today, on both the Thursday and the Saturday, it looks to be okay. Now, it was a close call with those people. That trail, by the way, is about 10 feet wide, just for your reference. By the way, a little trivia. The rough water is on a Saturday. The glassy, smooth water is on the Thursday. I'm going to open up my bicycle camera sound so you can hear me give a warning. Hello. Thank you. I try to shout out or sing a warning.
to those I'm coming up to from behind. I figure it's the most polite thing I can do. In case you didn't hear it, I sang, Hello, when I came up to the couple who were in front of me. That also shows you why I don't normally use the microphone on the camera. But you probably noticed a horrible, loud sound from the wind. Here we are coming up towards the Taylor Street dock. This is perhaps one of the more crowded and constrained parts of the trail. And as you can see, we have some swimmers on the dock. I want to remind you this is April, so you can imagine how many people will be on this part of the Taylor Street Dock and the Boardwalk in July and August. So consider that, especially if the coronavirus event is still going on in full swing. So enjoy some music, and I'll be back to talk about some more personal things. from the galaxy, those whom I know and those whom I don't know, I would like to talk about an out-of-body experience that I had recently. While I was doing some research on the history of the gay and lesbian movement, especially back in 1969, the time of the Stonewall riots, which was the event that marked a milestone in the gay and lesbian movement in the United States and the world. When looking at some old photographs of the riots, an image shouted out at me. There was an image of a youth, a gay runaway youth, who ran away from his home to New York City in 1960s. He looked just like I did when I was a youth. However, beyond that, I felt an immediate, full connection that he was inside of my soul and I was inside of his soul. It was not an attraction like a romantic attraction, but a full-blown connection that there was a pipeline between his soul and his mind and my soul and my mind. Now, I never knew him at the time, and I never heard of him until a few months ago. His name was Jackie 
Hormona. As you can see on your screen, you can look them up online using that spelling. You will find an old photograph where you see him. He is the blonde youth on the far left who looked like he was trying to push a policeman away from him and the other youth in the crowd. Now this is very interesting because up until that moment I was Mark Allen, a retired computing security engineer from Intel Corporation living in a tiny cozy little house in the Columbia neighborhood of Bellingham, Washington. Then suddenly I was Jackie Hormona, a runaway gay youth in New York City in 1969 and hanging out in Greenwich Village at the Stonewall Inn, the gay bar that was raided. That was the starting point of the Stonewall riots. Further research revealed that after the Stonewall riots, Jackie Harmona was active with the Gay Liberation Front and the Gay Activist Alliance, two very early gay rights organizations. Later on, he died of AIDS around 1982 or 1983, which is very interesting because the only lover that I ever had was a man by the name of Arthur Rosenau. He died of cancer in 1982 or 1983, but I met him in San Francisco in 1978, and we had a very short but extremely intense and passionate loving relationship. I can still feel Arthur's love coming down from the sky right now here in Bellingham. Now I also feel the presence of Jackie Hormona. Both Arthur and Jackie, along with my parents, Calvin and Virginia Allen, are up there somewhere in those galaxies waiting for me to make my presence. Now mind you, I would like to please emphasize that I am taking all care and due diligence to be very careful not to contract the COVID-19 virus. I am maintaining well beyond the physical distancing requirements and enjoying parks like this one, Elizabeth Park, where there are hardly any people at all, and I'm staying far away from any crowds or gatherings at all. I am exercising, I am eating well and sleeping well getting plenty of hydration. However, when that moment comes, if I fall down and I'm not breathing or I have a heart attack, please do not give me life-sustaining medical care. Just comfort me until Jackie and Arthur and Virginia and Calvin and others come down and usher me through the veil to the other side. I love you all. If I see you on the road, I will shout to you, but let's keep a safe physical distance until the coronavirus episode comes to a close.